Okay, hello all you crazy people out there. My name is Michael. I've got to start getting in the habit of saying that now. And welcome to my first official video on uh, Game Maker Studio 2.3, the, uh, the beta update. For those of you who don't know, the 2.3 update added a lot of, of new language features to GML. And uh, I'll be talking about a few of them in the next couple of videos. The first one uh, that I'm going to be talking about are functions. Those of you who have uh, used programming languages other than GML probably already know what this does and are probably going, thank God they're finally here, what took them so long? And for those of you who have not used programming languages besides GML, you've probably heard of them anyway because they're, they tend to be pretty important. So what I have here is, um, is a simple uh, test project made in um, old Game Maker Studio 2. Uh, if I click the left mouse button, the little square is going to jump to the position on the mouse. And if I click the right mouse button, it's going to rotate to face the mouse. Sort of. As, as much as the square width bilateral and radial symmetry can turn to face anything. Um, let me go and uh, look through how that works real quick. This is Game Maker Studio 2.2.5. Um, there, there is an object zero with a step event. If the left mouse button is pressed, it's going to script underscore move to point. If the right, mouse, the right mouse button is pressed, it's going to script to rotate to point. These are two scripts. Uh, these are very straightforward. You've seen these before. And I just opened up F1 by accident. It takes some parameters using argument 0, argument 1, argument 2. It does some stuff. Uh, there are these optional JS doc, JS doc comments at the top that will tell you what the, uh, what the arguments are so that they can appear at the bottom of code windows to, to give you hints as to what arguments you're supposed to pass to your functions. Um, it's a little verbose. The first six lines here are optional, but highly recommended because if, if you're just guessing at what argument one, argument two, argument three are, then you're gonna be very lost. Uh, I'm going to move this over here and we're gonna look at Game Maker Studio 2.3. So I'm going to create myself a script and let's call it, I'm just gonna call it movement code. And you can see that once I create a script, it's initialized with a few things. Hang on, give me two seconds. Okay, here we are. So one, there's a comment at the top that says uh, script asset has changed in the update, and there's a link to the help desk, um, the help desk location for more information. I'm gonna leave that in here. Uh, if anybody would like to go and read that article, you may find some additional information there. I'm going to uh, obviously attempt to explain what's going on here in this video. Functions have changed, scripts have changed. Uh, function Scripts are now just uh, files of code where stuff is defined, and that stuff is usually in the form of a function. It can also be other things, uh, which I will get to later. So there's this function called movement code that was automatically created. I'm going to delete that. I I'm not going. I'm not in need of that now. I'm just going to recreate the. Uh, I'm just going to recreate the scripts that I had in the 2.2 project. So let's say function move to point, and it's going to take, now I'll prefix it with, even though I don't have to, I'll prefix it with scr underscore, just so that you know it's, uh, it's something I made in this project. It's going to take an x, a y, and an instance. And how did it go? Instance.x equals xx. And that just needs to be one x, because x is a, an instance variable instance that y equals yy. And that's all. If I were to do a side by side of these, you will notice that one, the font sizes are different and that's a little bit uh, disorienting. Now they're the same. Uh, you'll notice that one, this is a lot shorter. It's got a lot of the fluff cut out. You don't need to, um, if you want to give arguments passed to a script names, you no longer need to assign them to local variables. Uh, you, don't, you no longer need to deal with argument zero, argument one, argument two, etc. Um, you don't need the JS doc comments at the top. You can still use them if you want to. I'll get to that later. Now, to, to get things underway, let's go to the step event. And I'm going to say if mouse check button, I'm going to go with mouse just check button pressed and be left. Uh, I'm just doing that to make it easier on myself or something that I want to demonstrate later. Uh, we will say, what was it, scr move to point. Mouse x, mouse y, and the uh, the instance ID. So let me run this, and it'll do that. 
I can now click and the instance jumps to my mouse position. That is, uh, that is not too complicated. We know how this works. We've used scripts in GameMaker before. You'll notice that if I put my cursor inside the, uh, inside the parentheses at the bottom of the code window, uh, the, ins the, uh, the arguments are named just the same as they are in, um, in the function definition here. This first line here is called the function definition or the function signature um, is what this at the top is. The whole thing here is the function definition. And, and like I said, you don't need the fancy JS dot comments to, uh, to make the argument names appear. I made a video on that like three weeks ago and that's already out of date. Thanks, Yo-Yo Games. So let's get to the other one. Instead of creating a separate script file for the, uh, for the other, for the other uh, function, I'm trying to get in the habit of calling these functions, the 2.3 versions functions and the two point the, the old game maker version scripts. Um, I don't know if that would be any any less confusion than just calling them all functions. But same arguments. But instead of instead of assigning the position, we're going to be assigning the rotation. So let's implement that. Let's set that up over here. Uh, instead of move to point, it's going to be rotate to point. And this is going to cause the uh, cause the little square to rotate. Maybe I should have drawn an arrow on it or something so that you can see where it's uh, where it's going. All right, let's draw an arrow. We're gonna take a break from code and, and do a little art lesson. Um, let's make it bigger. That is a really ugly arrow, but it'll do the job. They call it programmer art for a reason. All right, this should at least this should at least point the arrow towards my uh, my cursor. There we go. Now the, now the arrow is pointing towards my cursor. Kind of because the arrow itself is very very misaligned, because I'm bad at drawing stuff. So there's a few differences here. Uh, nothing has changed. Nothing has been removed. Uh, it's just the way that you use scripts and functions has changed. This has a couple of benefits. One, you can define as many of these functions in a single file of code as you want. Some people are lukewarm at best about this. Some people would prefer to have every single function defined in their own script. Uh, if you were to, to import a project from an old version of GameMaker Studio 2 to a new version, this will happen automatically. Your existing scripts will have their, uh, will have uh, function definitions wrapped around them and you won't have to do anything yourself, which is good because if you're like me and you have thousands and thousands of script files, uh, you most likely don't want to update all of those like manually because that would actually take forever. And I'd actually probably just like die before I finish that. But you're allowed to define as many of these in any file of code as you want. You're also allowed to define them anywhere in code. Uh, you could define these in the create event or anywhere else. I would not recommend doing that. I would recommend organizing these things into, into files relating to, to what they do. Uh, that is a project management piece of advice though. That is not programming. You can, you can define these wherever you want. On that note, there's also something called uh, th methods. Which has, which is similar to functions here, and they pertain to the more object-oriented aspects of the uh, of the game maker update. But I'm going to talk about those in a separate video. Hey. But back on point, you can use this to organize your um, you can use this to organize your code. I have in this 2.3 project, I have a million math-related functions and like data structures and um, transform matrix functions and a bunch of other things. When I when I updated. The other half of that project to, to 2.3, uh, much of that got collapsed. Where is it? Math, math-ish. Much of that got collapsed into a, into a couple individual files of code with many, many function definitions in them. So that's arrays. There are um, some buffer functions, uh, vectors, strings, that sort of thing. So you can use this to keep your project clean and not have a million files floating around. Again, I'd recommend grouping them together. You saw in that you saw in that other project over here, there's like different data structures and buffers and arrays and other things categorized by um, categorized by what they do. You don't have to do that, but you can if you want to. And having some sort of organization uh, will will undoubtedly help in the long run. So now, after seeing that functions are defined like this. The next logical question is what happens if you 
were to simply run code outside of a function definition in a script? And the answer to that, um, that's an interesting that's an interesting profile picture. I really need to remember to close my my internet browser when I'm recording stuff. Okay, um, if you're familiar with GML. GML pragma. No, I, I was looking at it. I was looking at my keyboard to make sure I typed the words correctly. I can dismiss this notification. Thank you. Um, and I, I still mistyped it like four times. If you're familiar with the GML pragma function, this will uh, this will send special instructions to the um, the game maker asset compiler or the YoYo compiler, um, and or the YoYo compiler. The global setting, the global pragma setting, will make the script run before anything else in the game, before room creation code, instance creation code, or anything like that, create events. And now in 2.3, anything that any code that you have outside of a function definition will do essentially that by default now. So if I were to um, show message, let's do something that'll be very obvious what it does. Let's show a message. If I were to do that, and run the game. Now, before anything happens, before the game window even appears, before the game window has even been created, uh, it will show a message, global code. And then I click OK, and we're in business. And this has its uses. Generally, it's not something you'd want to do. I foresee this being something that a lot of people do by accident and can lead to unexpected errors. But there are uses for this. If you want to initialize something that's relating to these functions, uh, let's imagine, let's say you want to keep track of how many times you run these, these functions. And I know that, let's get this out of the way, yes, static, static variables and static methods do exist. And that would probably be the preferred way to, um, to do what I'm about to do, but that's not the point of this video. Uh, let's say global dot uh, times you did stuff equals zero. I don't know what else to call that variable. So we're going to initialize a global variable times you did stuff and then we're just gonna plus plus it when you run one of these functions. And then we'll just display the value of that variable in the console. So let's run the game now, and we will now be counting the number of times we move or rotate this guy. One, two, three, four. Counting upwards. I can't count that high. I've done a lot of clicking. That's one of the things I'm good at. I used to play far too many idle games. So the point is, uh, you initialize this code outside of a, of a function definition, and it runs automatically. You don't have to call it. It'll happen on its own. Uh, right when the game starts before anything happens. So this is good for initializing stuff. Shut up, phone. Again, static variables would be the preferred way to do this. I just wanted to prove the point. So there are other things you can do with functions. You can assign functions to, um, to variables. You can say var f equals scr rotate to point without the, without the curly braces or arguments. And you could say, let's, um, Let's do that in here. You could call the function indirectly, mouse x, mouse y, id. Um, this is going to be kind of awkward, because as of my recording this video, this is actually broken. This will actually crash the game. Uh, this has been an error reported to YoYo Games regarding the 2.3 beta. I can I can click to move you, but if I were to, if I were to, to right click to rotate you, it would break. This has been reported to YoYo Games. Hopefully, this will be cleared up by uh, in due time, it's one of the uh, one of the drawbacks of trying to use a game engine while it's still in beta stages is that sometimes things go wrong like that. If you've ever used a language like JavaScript before, you'll probably uh, you'll probably be like twitching uncomfortable uncomfortably as you watch me type that. But in any case, hey, you can uh, you can assign functions to variables and pass them around. There's also I think I mentioned this earlier. There's the there's the uh, the matter of instance methods. Uh, which is a which is definitely a subject for its own video. I'll be getting to that later. Those are not bugs. Those do indeed work, and those are amazing. But that's a story for another day when I talk about structs. But no matter. That's it. That is an overview in uh, in functions in GML two point three.
I will have the code to this project and I will probably try to remember to comment it a little bit. You know what? I'll preface that line of code with that just so that people don't come asking questions. Uh, this, this project will be in the video description on GitHub. I've also just finally recently launched the Patreon, so if anybody's into like crowdfunding stuff and wants to support these videos, uh, you can go and do that as well. There's a link in the, in the video description. Other than that, my name is Michael. I will be doing more of these videos on the, uh, the GML 2.3 update as well as other stuff. I happen to like doing 3D things in Game Maker and just game dev in general. Uh, I hope you all found that useful and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want your name in the credits and a chance at me making a fool of myself trying to pronounce it, head over to the Patreon page in the video description. Am I doing this right?